name be glorified. But in Jesus mighty name, we have prayed. Hey, that the city will be rebuilt on its own. And the palace will be dwelt in after the former fashion. The city of the Lord will be rebuilt. You are the city of the Lord. I don't know the part of you that is broken. Can you ask the Lord this morning, from this altar, let the rebuilding take place. Lord, rebuild my health. Lord, rebuild, restore to me my finances. Let the righteousness that needs to be returned to you be returned to you. Every gap, every crack, can you ask the Lord to rebuild this morning? That as the word of the Lord is going forth from this altar, Lord, rebuild us with your word. Our bones are continually before you. Lord, rebuild us with the word of grace. Lord, rebuild us by your spirit. Lord, rebuild us this morning. We ask that every broken thing in our life be rebuilt. Lord, we ask for a rebuilding by your word. Lord, rebuild us by your mercy. Every health that is broken down. Lord, every enemy that is ravaging the life of your people. Lord, we ask him for glory by encounter with your word. Let the rebuilding of life take place. Lord, rebuild the lives of your children. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And just before Paro comes up, verse 19 said, Out of death will come songs of thanksgiving. Amen. And the voices of those who make men. I will multiply them and they will not be few. Yes. I will also glorify them and they will not be small. Can you ask the Lord to send you songs? That songs will see for my life. That my life will become a melody. Lord, make my life a melody. Lord, fill the sanctuary with new songs. Lord, we ask for songs of victory. Lord, we ask for songs of enlargement. Lord, we ask somebody for songs of multiplication. Lord, we ask someone restore unto us. Songs this morning. Let my life become a melodious song. Let songs proceed out of every vessel this morning. Can you ask the Lord for a song? Can you ask the Lord for a song? That we will not be few this morning. From the song that will proceed from us this morning, let that be a judgment. God, multiply your people. God, multiply your people. God, multiply your assembly. God, multiply us in grace. God, multiply us in power. God, multiply us in victory. God, multiply us in glorious things. God, we ask for songs. Let my life produce songs. Melodious songs. God, I receive songs from this sanctuary this morning. Lord, I receive my own song. The song that you get to Hannah, you get Hannah a song. You get Sarah a song. God, you get Esther a song. God, you get the children of all follow you a song. When you let them out of Egypt, when you took their captivity, God, a song proceeded on their mouth. This morning we ask for songs. God, release all of them unto us songs. Let our song come. Let our song come. We glorify you, O Lord, King of glory, as we make merry in you. God, let there be multiplication this morning. Multiply us that we might not be few. Lord, glorify your people that we might not be small. Let your glory fill the stamina of Jesus, let your glory fill the stamina of and Messiah, let your power fill the stamina of And let your name be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you. thank you for bringing us into your dwelling place. Thank you because we are not before the courts of men, but before the courts of the most high God. Lord, we ask for King of glory, fill our mouth with laughter. Amen. Let there be new tidings for Lord even in this place this morning. Tidings of grace, tidings of salvation, tidings of healing, tidings of victory, tidings of King of glory that will bring joy unto 
your holy name. Glorify yourself in the midst of us. Let our world come. And Lord, let nothing stop your power. Let nothing hinder your glory. Right, majestically upon the wings of glory this morning. And let your name be glorified. So in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Put those hands together. And one silence. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's put our hands together for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Great I Am, the Mighty God. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you honor. Father, we exalt you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we glorify you. Lord, we lift you up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. Just lift your hands to Jesus and honor him. Lift your hands to Jesus and bless him. What a mighty God we serve. He's the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the great I am. He is the mighty God. Father, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we bless your name. Be thou glorified. Be thou magnified. Be thou lifted up in the name of Jesus. Job chapter 38 and verse 15. From the weekend, their light is withheld, and the oppressed arm of the enemy is broken. Everybody say with me, broken. Can you say it louder? Say broken. Or I say this way, say, Lord, break the hand of the weekend over the nation of Nigeria. Break the act of the weekend over my family. Break the act of the weekend over my destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice to God and pray. From the depth of your heart, cry out to God. God is working a war in our land, in our nation, in our lives, in our families, in our destinies. God is working a war. He's breaking the hands of the wicked. He's breaking the yoke of the adversary. He's withholding the light from the enemy. In the name of our Lord Jesus, God is withholding the light of the enemy. God is breaking the hands of the wicked. God is breaking the hands of the wicked. The Lord of the wicked shall no longer rest upon the Lord of the righteous. In our nation, in our land, in our families, and in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. And when God withholds light from the wicked, He gives light to the righteous. When God breaks the hand of the wicked, he strengthens the hand of the righteous. Can you lift your voice and flip that prayer over? Say with me, Father, give you light to the righteous and strengthen the hands of the righteous. Strengthen my hands and strengthen my destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. Father, give light to the righteous in our land. Give light to the righteous in our nation. Let the light of the righteous shine. Let the light of the righteous break forth out of the obscurities of man. Let the light of the righteous break forth. Let the light of the righteous shine. And Lord, strengthen the arm of the righteous. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name forever. 
In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. The Lord will give you life. The Lord will lighten your life. He will strengthen your hands. Whatever you raise your hand to do, it will succeed. It will break forward. It will be fruitful. It will be productive. In the name of Jesus, God will strengthen your hands. And he will break the arms of the wicked over your life and family and over our nation, Nigeria. In the name of Jesus, this is a season of the church. This is a season of the righteous. For it shall come to pass in the last day that the mountains of the Lord's house shall be exalted above the hills. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. In this week and from this day, the Lord will exalt you. The Lord will promote you. The Lord will uplift you. In the name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord will raise you and you will never go down. For the everlasting acts of the Lord are underneath you. Therefore, you will not fall, you will not fail, you will not stumble, you will not fall down. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. But this time next Sunday, which is our testimony Sunday, God will fill your mouth with testimonies. God will fill your mouth with testimonies. You will have something to testify about. You will have something to celebrate. And the name of the Lord will be glorified. Thank you, Father. Glory to God forever. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Can we say louder, amen? Can we sit in God's presence? Glory to God forever. As you sit down, you will never go down. As you sit down, your enemies will never rise up. In the name of Jesus. Whoever rises up against you will fall for your sake. And the name of the Lord shall be glorified. Hallelujah. We are grateful to God for another beautiful Sunday to be in the house of the Lord. God bless you for being in church this morning. No early this morning. I was out to pick up some things in the compound. And I saw my next door neighbor. And he said, Pastor, are you preparing to go to church? And I said, yes. What about you? He said, no, we are not going to church until the end of coronavirus. He said, my wife is preparing to go. But I told that we are not going. And I smiled. I said, bro, what if this corona doesn't go forever? If you see how it goes like uh, malaria and all the rest. He said, that's the end of church for me to that. I said, bro, or you go to work. You go to the market. You go even to the viewing center to go and watch soccer. But why are you afraid of going to the house of God, the house of prayer, the house of power, the house of glory? Then he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. You know why? They go from strength to strength. Everyone that appears before God is Zion. Hallelujah. They go from strength to strength. From glory to glory. From one level of brightness to the other. And I see God taking you from strength to strength. Because you have appeared before him this morning, your life will shine brighter. Your life will shine brighter. Your life will shine brighter. God will multiply strength to you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This morning, I'm speaking to us on the cry of the Spirit. For the hour. There is a cry of the spirit for the hour. And there is a question in the heart of the Holy Spirit that is asking every believer, that is asking every child of God. And that question 
that is a cry of the spirit is a form of a question that I'm going to ask this morning. Ask my sub topic. My main topic is a cry of the spirit. But what is the spirit crying this morning? It's a simple question. Are you sensual or spiritual? Are you sensual or spiritual? That is a question in the heart of the Holy Spirit that is asking every child of God, that is asking every member of the church, that is asking everyone that claims to belong to Jesus. Because you see, one of the greatest danger and tragedy of the 21st century church and the believer is our commitment, our pursuit, and our grace for sensuality rather than spirituality. Just tell with me. It is true. According to scripture, that man looks on the sensual. Man looks on the outward appearance over and above the unseen, the spiritual. Man is always looking and craving for the sensual. Man is always looking and craving for that which can be seen, that which can be observed with the physical eyes. You hear me? If only our mother is and looked and seen beyond the sensual that the fruit is good for food and pleasant to the sensual eyes, we all will not be in trouble today. The original problem of man that brought mankind and the entire universe into the quagmire of evil and sin is as a result of sensuality instead of spirituality. When you are sensual and not spiritual, there are things that God can never, ever speak to you about. And hear me, one of the greatest blessings, one of the greatest assets of the New Testament believer in Christ is the ability to hear God. Is the ability to know those shares the law. Is the ability to obtain divine directions. Is the ability to receive divine ideas. Is the ability to be led. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Just three days ago, three days ago, I was so tired. I was famished. I've done a lot of work. And then I had a boil on my eye that was hurting so bad. I couldn't sleep. I was just restless. And then while I lie there, I laid those hands on my eyes. I said, Holy Spirit, heal these hands. And the Spirit of God said to me, Stand up, go to the paddle and pray. So I stood up. I went to the living room and I prayed. I prayed. I prayed. I spent about two and a half, three hours praying. And then when I finished, I was listening to the Lord. And the Lord said to me, but I'm asking for what? For healing for my eyes. And the Spirit of God said, Send a message now to your landlady and ask her to reduce your rent at least for this year. It sounds very. <laughs> I know our landlady that even when you do a legitimate work in the house, for her to pay you back the money, it's strong. She does not talk with her money at all. 
like the Jesus in Nigeria will say, she is a pure Oshomano. My God with the other lady, her money must be complete. And the Spirit of God said, send a message to her now and request a reduction of your rent. Our rent is going to be due in 10 days. I've been thinking about how to raise the money, how to get the money. But I wasn't thinking about it. I was praying about my eyes. And the Holy Spirit is putting an idea in my heart. But I didn't obey. I was rationalizing it. I was being sensual about it. What I know about the woman, what I've heard about the woman, what I've seen about the woman was guiding my thoughts. So I came back to the room, I lay down. I wanted to sleep. And the Spirit of God came back to me. Will you rather obey God or not? And I, I, I cried out. I said, Lord, I'll do it. I'll do it. And I picked my truth. My wife was just looking at me beside me. Like, What's wrong with this guy? I picked my phone and I sent a message to her. And then I had peace. It was like a pot cold water on my heart. But I dropped the phone and I slept. I was around 4 30 a.m. I woke up later by 10, 10 30. I saw that she has read my message on WhatsApp, but she didn't reply. So I left it. Around 6 p.m. in the evening, I got a message. Pastor, thank you for making this request. I am reducing 15% of the rent. Please, and she was begging me, please be here with me for selling this. And so I shouted, yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I had it before I gave it to my children. I said, did you see all the drama that was happening overnight? This was it. And I was explaining to What am I saying? Why did I share this testimony, friends? The greatest asset of the New Testament believer is to hear the voice of God. Is to be guided by the Spirit. Is to be directed by the Spirit. Is to be led by the Spirit. Is to be instructed by the Spirit. And hear me, the greatest tragedy of the New Testament believer is because we are more sensual than we are spiritual. And when you are sensual, it is impossible, most impossible for you to hear the voice of God. In First Corinthians, chapter number three and verse number one, hear this word of the Lord. First Corinthians three one, Paul speaking to the Corinthian church, he said that I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to Canaan. And as to babes in Christ. There are treasures of wisdom, treasures of knowledge and understanding that Paul, by the Spirit of God, was to pass across to the Corinthian church, to the Corinthian brethren. But because they were carnal and sensual, Paul desired to speak to them. But he could not do so. Why? Because they were sensual. They were carnal. God is seeking to speak to you that you are willing to hear him. God is ready to guide you that you are ready to receive. But because you are carnal and sensual, God cannot pass across to you because God is a spirit, and those who must serve him and worship him must do so not by sexuality or carnality, but by the spirit and by the truth. God speaks in spiritual languages and not sensual language. What does it mean to be sensual? It refers basically to the enjoyment that one derives from the senses. 
to be sensual is not to be sexual. But you can't be sexual without being sensual. So sensuality can actually lead to sexuality. But sensuality is not sexuality. So don't think I'm talking about sexuality here. I'm talking about sensuality. And sensuality refers simply to the pleasure that one derives and enjoys from the senses. So the gratification and indulgence of what the senses produces. How many? There are five senses by which man operates in sensuality. What you see with your eyes, what you hear with your ears, what you smell with your nose, what you taste with your tongue, and what you feel or touch with your skin, with your body. And all that sensuality gives birth to and produces is never pleasing or acceptable to God. Sensuality can never please God. Because you know why? First Corinthians, back to it again. First Corinthians 3. I read now verse 3. Okay, let me just read verse 2 3 so you can get the flow. He said, I fed you with milk and not with salt food. For until now, you were not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. Why is it so? Verse 3. He said, For you are still carnal. You are still sensual. And what does sensuality produce? He said, For there amongst you is strife. Strife never comes from spirituality. People that are spiritual, they don't strive. Because they know no man after the flesh, but after the spirit. But when you are operating by sensuality, anything anybody does to you, you easily feel it. And so there is strife. There is envy. How does envy come? You see what has happened to your neighbor. This guy is doing well. God, this guy has gotten this above me. And then suddenly the envy comes. Because your eyes have seen something. Or your ears have had something. Or you are sleeping in your house hungry. And then your neighbor is crying air with sardine. And the aroma oozes into your room. And then envy rises up in your body. And say, what kind of neighbor is this? Every day they'll just be, they'll just be enjoying in this place. Envy, strife, division comes as a result of sensuality. And where there is salt, God can move. So when there is strife between husband and wife, spirituality didn't cause it. Sensuality cost it. When there is strife between workers and the place of work, spirituality didn't produce it. Sensuality produced it. When there is division in the church, someone is angry with the other. Why is it broken that is always needing praise? Uh, can I also say that is sensuality and carnality speaking? Sensuality does not and can never please God. It can never produce what is right in the sight of God. And unfortunately, many are in the thought of Jesus Christ. Rather than being spiritual and living spiritually, they are living sensual and carnal. And so God can't even pass his word his will, his idea across to them. And hear me. Most of the things we see in church today that drives the crowd and drives the people 
Sexuality is bad to many of them. Many of them. Many of them. I was in a conference some time ago, and um, the great preacher that was invited was preaching. It was a church group conference, and I, I was excited that maybe there's something that I'm going to learn in this church group conference. And so I went to the conference, and we sat down for the one hour, 15 minutes the teacher taught, friends. There was nothing about the Holy Spirit concerning the growth of the church. There was nothing about prayer spoken in that conference concerning the growth of the church. There was nothing said about the influence of the Word of God on the Holy Spirit in growing the church. You know what the preacher started with? He said, I pastored for 10 years and I had less than 200 people. He said, then one day, I went to eat in a new restaurant that opened in Letty. He said, and as I got there, I saw ground. I saw cars parked. I saw big, big people coming to eat there. And then suddenly, I asked myself, what is driving people to this restaurant? And People are not being driven to the church I passed. That's why I went in. I sat down and I looked. I saw that it was the way they packaged themselves. He said at the car park, there was somebody directing to park that place. At the door, there was somebody opening the door for you and smiling at you. By the counter, there was somebody that is giving you a party. He said, I looked around and I saw how the place was well packaged. How they built the place for taste. How soft, sweet music was coming out from the speakers. And then I realized that it was this packaging that was driving people to the place. He said, so I went back to our church and I began to implement a new regime of packaging. He said that our church moved from less than 200 and it moved to 5,000. He said, and he moved from there, he moved to another level. He said, and then when he went to the US to preach, he saw some other things. He came back, packaged it again, he implemented it. And I saw them. And I could hear the Spirit of God saying, My friends, you are not supposed to be here. He said, I was still package. God is a God of excellence. And there is no packaging that is beyond excellence. Excellent dressing, excellent music, excellent setting, but above all of that, what grows the church of God in truth is not the packaging, it is the spirit of God. For the Bible says, and the Lord had death to the church daily, such as should be saved. If it is not the Lord that the act of that addition. Of that multiplication, of that increase, of that growth, my friend, you are in danger of being judged for sexuality and not for spirituality. When you look at a friend and you begin to feel pity for yourself, that your friends have gone far ahead of you, is it the Spirit of God that is telling you that? All the things you see, the things you hear, the things that you that you have smelt around it that is telling you that. When what drives you to go to a church is because they have big crowds, they have big buildings, all oh, the places are lovely. It is only the physical things that is driving you. My friend, you are in the danger of being judged for living your life session. But because man loves the upward appearance, that's what scripture says. Man loves it. And so people are naturally wanting to gain to sensuality above spirituality. So where there is sensuality and not spirituality, there will be factions instead of fellowship. Either in the family or in the church or in the place of work. 
where what is driving the people and the place is sensuality and not spirituality, there will be factions instead of fellowship. There will be gimmicks instead of grace. They will use all kind of gimmicks to trap you. That is what gives back to most of the adverts you see on the TV. They are appealing to your sensuality. Okay, they want to promote tire, tire, tire of car. And then they bring an affiliated woman for the advert. What are they doing? They are appealing to your sensuality so they can trap you to buy their tires. They will use all kind of gimmicks. You know that in the church that Solomon built, after they finished praying, the Bible says the glory of God descended upon the temple, right? In most of our concerts and our big meetings today, we see a glory, a cloud. Have you seen it before? We see a cloud, but is it a cloud of God's glory? Is the cloud of what? Is a cloud of a machine, a light. Something is producing that cloud. And then when you ask the people after the concert of the project, the program was wonderful. What makes it wonderful? There was a loud music. And then there was a cloud moving. And then the people feel ecstasy. The people feel happy. The people feel great. The feeling is sensual. The knowing is spiritual. I hear people say, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not a feeling. The Holy Ghost is a knowing. Hallelujah. You hear a deliverance minister tell you, jump up seven times and turn seven times. After you have jumped and turned seven times, are you not going to fall down? And then when you fall down, you say, that is the Holy Ghost. That is the Spirit moving. That is not the Spirit moving. He has used gimmicks to replace the Spirit and the move of the Spirit. And because the people are all sensual, they never get to reason it, to understand that this is not the Spirit of This is sensual. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. In the midst of deliverance and the move of the spirit, the Holy Spirit does not break tears. When there's deliverance happening and tears are breaking, you see people <laughs> and they're following them. It's not the Holy Spirit pushing them. Someone has seen. In another place, that people fall down and people vibrate. That has registered in the subconscious. And so when a high-sounding preacher comes and generates a momentum by any kind of gimmicks, the person feels, I need to, I need to produce this manifestation. Where there is sensuality, there is much gimmicks instead of grace. There is much picnics instead of power. There is much picnics instead of power. Let me show you a scripture. And you see where the spirit warriors moving in their midst. What it was that was happening. After the apostles that perform, I read of 32 to 37. Now the Lord teaching of those who believe were of one heart and of one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. So there was a community spirit, a commonality spirit, a camaraderie spirit. There was a fellowship instead of a faction. Where there is sensuality, 
Somebody wants to prove that he's richer than the others. Somebody wants to prove that he's greater than the others. There is no commonality. There is no camaraderie. There is no unity and oneness as you see here. There will be factions instead of fellowship. And look at verse 43. He says, and with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Not upon the big man alone. Upon them all. And that's what we seek to bring this in. To eliminate the big man syndrome. And to bring every one of us to that point where you are able to operate with great grace. The Bible says, and there was great grace upon them all. 3,000 have just given their lives for Christ, and there was great grace upon them all. There was great grace upon them all. There was great power moving through them all. They were not operating gimmicks. They were operating grace. They were not operating picnics. They were operating power. Where the spirit of the Lord is at work, there is life instead of death. But where sensuality is at work, there will be death instead of life. That's what James chapter 1 tells us. Reading from verse 13 to 15. James chapter 1. From verse 13 to 15. Glory to God forever. He said, let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's run away by his own desires, and then he is enticed. Enticed. And what entices men is not the things of the heart. They are the things of the senses. What you see is what entices you. What you hear is what entices you. What you smell. You may not be hungry for beans, but you hear about Andrew boiling a sweet, sweet, aromatic beans. And then suddenly you are hungry. You want to eat beans. You are enticed. You want to eat beans. Suddenly you saw Somebody doing more and more, and suddenly you are hungry for more money. Praise God. It is what you see that entices you. It is what you see that entices you. He said, Everyone is tempted when he's drawn by his own desire and then gets enticed. He said, that When desire conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it has grown, it brings forth death. So everything that is enticing you brings forth death. Brings forth death. As sensuality entices, spirituality inspires. Sensuality entices, spirituality inspires. It inspires. It inspires. Hallelujah. When people give heed to sensuality, they are driven by sensationalism instead of sensitivity. They are looking for what is sensational. They are looking for the spectacular. They are looking for the big and high sounding. And they are no longer sensitive. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 19, tells us they are planning. Particularly if you read from the NIV translation. Ephesians chapter 4. When people are driven by sense, sensuality, they pray for the sensational and they are no longer sensitive to the spirit of God. They are no longer sensitive to the move of God. He said, This I say, therefore, and testify in the law that you no longer walk. As the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. Having their understanding darkened 
being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Who will be past feeling? The energy says they've gone past sensitivity. They are past feelings. They are past, they've gone past sensitivity of the spirit. Have given themselves over to lewdness. To say, lewdness is another word for sensuality. To walk on uncleanliness with greediness. May the Lord save our generation from this tragedy of sensuality. In the name of Jesus Christ. I told us some time ago, myself and my assistant pastor there, we went to see a pastor, a senior minister of God. He was to share with us and give us some counsel. And he began to say to us, he said, Pastor, when I came into your church the other day, I saw as an usher a brother that has driver marks. I saw the singers on the altar. They were wearing boo-boo skirt. He said, Pastor, this church will grow. I said, what? He said, because the generation, they are the new generation. He said, we must operate the church like new generation bands. He said, it's when you go to Union Bank, Fema Bank, and First Bank, that you see people that dress like your choir and your ushers. He said, when you go to new generation bands, you see old ladies with complex who are wearing very odd skirts. He says, so I want you to implement these things in your church. You see that God I met as an author that has cyber mat. It should be prayer room. It should be prayer band. It should not be an author. It should not be the choir. It should not be anywhere where people will see him. He said, he will scare people. He said, that brother should be the prayer band. He said, you see all these young fire people. Tell them from where I'm scared. He said, boys, we got fire in your church. He said, then have some greeters, nice looking sisters who will stand by the gate and by the door and welcome the people with his son. He said, don't you sell access to doors? He said, welcome to access He said, so put them at your gate. Then the people welcome to kingdom. He said, when brothers come and they look at the leg, he said, wow. He said, they will come back to church next time. With a super head. And there was a cry in my heart. Is this what we've reduced the thought of the living God to? And of course, they are doing it and it's working for them. It's working for them. And people have been driven by it. They're looking for the sensational rather than being sensitive. When we crave for and feed the wrong appetite, when satisfying the sensual, becomes our goal and our pursuit, we will lose the spiritual. Look at the sensual and the spiritual the same time. You can serve God and man one. You have to choose one. You have to choose one. And when we crave and pursue the sensual, we will lose the spiritual. When we crave and pursue the sensual, we will lose our awe and wonder for God. We will begin to wow the things that has no value before God. We will lose the awe and the wonder that we have to have towards God. Our hearts will become adding against the truth and against the things of God. When we pursue the sensual, our hearts will become hardened against the truth. We will fall into the error of Demas. Listen, Demas was in the apostolic band of Paul. But rather than Demas being awed by the power and the manifestation that the life of Paul was producing, them as we leave the fellowship and maybe go to a nightclub. Them as we leave the fellowship and maybe go somewhere else again and go and enjoy. And then 
The desire for the sensual ultimately made him to lose the spiritual and to lose his all and wonder for God and again his heart against God eventually it forsook Paul and everything God and went back into the world. And went back into the world. When we feed the appetite of our sensuality, this is what will happen. We will ultimately fall into the error of demons. And I hope there is no one here And instantly, because of what the guy saw and what he feels he could do with such money, he killed that train. Collected his phone and his ATM card. Connected others for helping withdraw six million from the 13 million. They eventually caught him. You know where they caught him? In an hotel. What has he done with six million? Drinking and carrying money. Sensuality. When a man becomes sensual, he will steal. He will become a thief. When a woman becomes too sensual, she will live in immorality. If it's an housewife, we commit adultery. If it's single, we fornicate because of what he wants to do with women. I hope and pray that there is no one under the sound of my voice this morning that has been driven by the spirit of sensuality. If you have, I tell you, by the spirit of God, your sin will find you out. Your sin will find you out. Your sin will find you that you are under the service and this ministration today you are inexcusable to continue to live a sensual life. When we crave the sensual, we will fall into the error of devils. We will lose back that heavenly treasures that are to come to us. Sensuality is dangerous to our soul. It starts slowly, silently, and subtly, but the effect of sensuality is tragic, is severe, and is lasting. The downward road of sensuality usually gives a feeling of happiness, a feeling of ecstasy, a feeling of arrival, <laughs> but it's just for a short while. And that is the devil's enticing strategy to destroy the foolish and the good. Let me read to you how Paul addressed this matter in the life of the Galatian church and then the prayer. The Galatian church and brethren started in spirituality and then slipped into sensuality. And I want you to listen to how Paul addressed him. Galatians 3. I'm reading from the Amplified. Oh, you poor, silly, thoughtless, unreflecting, and senseless Galatians, who has fascinated or bewitched or cast a spell over you unto whom right before your very eyes Jesus Christ the Messiah 
was openly and graphically set forth and portrayed as crucified. So let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as a result of obeying the law and doing its works? Or was it by hearing the message of the gospel and believing it? Was it from observing the law to read to us or from the message of faith? But three bells. Are you so foolish and so senseless and so silly? Haven't begun your new life spiritually with the Holy Spirit. Are you now reaching perfection by depending on the senses, on the flesh? It's impossible. Pastor, is there then no place for our senses in our work with God? Are we going to cut off our hands? Block out our eyes, block our ears, seal our mouth, and be wearing really iron garment so that we won't feel or touch anything. You see, our lives as New Testament believers is 100% spiritual and 100% physical. But the way not to be sensual, to remain spiritual, is to make sacred your senses. I repeat again. The way to remain spiritual and not sensual is to make sacred your senses. How do I mean? Consecrate your senses to the Lord. Consecrate it. Consecrated in Job 31 and verse 1. Job, a man who lived even before his time, he says in Job 31 and verse 1, he says, I have made a covenant. I have consecrated my eyes to the Lord. Why then should I look upon a young woman? That is upon a young woman. For those who are lost in. What about for those who are still in? I consecrate my eyes to the Lord. Why should I look for another one's property to steal it? For those who are envious, I consecrate my eyes to the Lord. Why should I look on what another has and then be envious and covetous? The way out. In order not to fall into the error of sensuality, is to make your senses sacred. Is to consecrate it to the Lord. I read one more scripture and we pray. Proverbs chapter four. Proverbs chapter four. I read verse twenty to twenty-seven. If I'm able, if not, wherever I stop, we'll leave it at that. Proverbs chapter 4 from this 20. My son, this is the Lord speaking through the mount of Solomon. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. So you see the senses of the air now. Incline it. And if you must incline your ear to something, it definitely means you must turn it away from something. So, turn your ears away from everything and everything that is not God and turn it to the Lord. Consecrate it to the Lord. Turn it to the Lord. Do not let them depart from your eyes. You see the senses of the eye? Don't let the word of God depart from your eyes. Bury your eyes in the word of God. Turn your eyes away from anything that will lead you away from God. Consecrate your eyes to the Lord. 
He said, for their life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. You see the body now. The body fulfilled, the flesh. The flesh. Let the life of God become the life of the flesh. The life that I now live, Paul said, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died and gave himself for me. He said, keep your heart with all diligence. So out of it spring the issues of life. Don't forget, Jesus said, out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what the Lord is saying here is that keep your heart strong and straight so that your mouth won't transgress the senses of the mouth. You'll be able to speak awesome words, gracious words. That put away from you a deceitful mouth. Did you see that? And put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your feet from you. This is the way to please the Lord. This is the way to walk with the Lord. This is the way to remain spiritual. It is by consecrating our lives unto the Lord. No wonder Paul beseech the Roman church. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Lord, that you consecrate yourself unto the Lord, that you present your bodies unto the Lord, a living sacrifice, only an acceptable, which is a reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of the Lord. So you can prove what is right, good, and acceptable will. This is the way to remain spiritual. This is the way to live a life that pleases God. And hear me, if we live like this, we will pray less. For when the ways of a man pleases the Lord, he may get even his enemies to be at peace with him. Many of those of us who pray, fall down, die, fall down, die, fall down, die. My enemy, that, my enemy, that. They are most, some of them are most of the wicked people I've ever met. Some of them are most of the sadistic people I have ever met. They don't forgive. They are very hard at it. And then we wonder why all that we have been saying and asking them to fall down and die are running. You're wondering why there is no much power and grace and glory of God in the land. It's because we are not spiritual. We are sentient. We are sentient. We are sentient. The pastor said to us sometime ago, he said, Our church is going to go in the streets. He said, Because nobody has our building, nobody has our equipment. In the whole of this place, nobody has our equipment. Nobody has our building. So, church has not been reduced to buildings and to equipment. And when we deny the power of God, we don't see it. No matter the knowledge of God we retain in our heart, if we deny his power. And how do we deny his power? By exalting other things above him. For if I believe that all, says the Lord, I will draw all men and all things that men are capable of operating with, I will draw it to This word I've spoken to you this morning is spirit and is life. If you will embrace it, it will change your life. If you will walk by it and live by it, it will transform your life. So when you see things with your physical heart, in your heart, begin to ask, Lord, what are you saying? When you hear things with your physical ears, in your heart, begin to ask, Lord, what are you saying? Before anything comes out of your mouth, be asking, Lord, this word I want to speak is in your word. Is here of your spirit. When you begin to live life like that, you will become a delightsome land. You will become a treasure, a royal diadem in the hands of the Lord. 
Rise up on your feet, let us go. Rise up on your feet, let us go. Can you ask the Lord to consecrate you? That's the first prayer we'll pray. Just, just point your life to the Lord and ask Him to consecrate you. 